Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Mode Adventure Club where we cover all things adventure from reviews to how-to videos, RVing, camping, uh, destination reviews, all kinds of good stuff like that. Today we're going to be covering the cold temperature tolerances of a heat pump in an RV. Now based off all of the information that I received online through some of my research, everybody tends to kind of agree uh, that around freezing is when your heat pump is no longer going to be all that effective, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything below that and your efficiency is going to drop way down and uh, it's barely going to work if it works at all. Uh, there are some heat pump manufacturers that claim they can get a little colder than that, but uh, today we're going to put that to the test. So I have a Blizzard NXT by Dometic. This is an AC heat pump that was installed on my RV and so it's going to be perfect for the test and we've got a cold snap coming in here to Colorado that's going to bring some snow and some really cold temperatures so I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to see just how well these heat pumps are going to perform in this cold weather. So I'm going to take you out there and for the first test it's going to be about 34, 36 degrees somewhere in that range. I have a little infrared heat gun with me so we're going to check the temperatures and see how it does before the storm and uh, then we'll compare it to the day after when the temperatures really get down a little lower into the I believe it's about 20 degrees on the second day. I did have some problems with my infrared gun on the second day so you'll just have to take my word on that one but we're gonna jump right out there and check it out right now. Okay so let's start off with the outside temperature here. It's about 34 degrees. Okay so I have the heat pump turned on to 72 degrees and if we look inside the inside temperature here we're going to have 41 degrees so it's climbing a little bit and then let's move on up here to uh, slowly pan you over to the heat pump going. Let's see if it's actually producing some heat here. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's inside the unit there. Let's check this fin right here. It's showing 88 degrees. It definitely feels very warm on my hand, so it is definitely putting out some heat. It doesn't feel like 88 degrees to me, but um, it's, it's definitely warm. So according to the temp gun inside, we have, you know, about 90 degrees on the bottom of the case here. We have 69 degrees. That feels closer to the temperature that's coming out, in my opinion. But inside, you know, it's, it's rocking the heat, but as far as the air is coming out, I would say it feels like 70, but that's great. Let's see what temperature can get the inside of this RV to. Okay, so we've been going for about 35 minutes now, and if we check that, we are up to 51 degrees. So we'll keep letting it do its thing. Okay, so it has been over an hour, probably about an hour and 20 minutes. We're gonna check the inside temperature. 68, so it's doing a really, really good job of heating it up in here. And uh, just for fun, we'll also check the temperature coming out of the unit itself. We'll swivel you around here. Okay, so here we have the heat pump. We're going to check the temperature on that. 92 on the bottom plastic. Inside it says 118. And on the fin there, it says 114. Let's check the roof above it here. 90. So, I mean, it's it's definitely cranking out some heat up there. It feels to me like the, the air is probably around 75 degrees, just guessing off the feel of my face, but definitely some very warm air coming out of there. It's doing a really, really good job. Okay, so it's been a couple hours now. We're gonna check the internal temperature. All right, we're right at 72, which is exactly what I have it set to be at. So that's fantastic, it's doing a great job. Okay, I wanted to do one more final test for the old heat pump here. It is very cold outside. Currently 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, outside, inside temp here in the RV is reading 32, so freezing. We're gonna fire up the old heat pump and see if it's able to work in this temperature. We have it set to 72. We'll see how it does. Okay, so the heat pump has been running for, uh, I don't know, about 30 minutes. And the temperature hasn't changed at all. And when I swivel around here to the actual uh, heat pump right here, it's blowing very cold air. So I'm afraid that's just too cold for it. 34 degrees was fine, 20 degrees, too cold. 
Okay, so there you go. It did really, really well. When the temperature was at 32 to 34 degrees on the first day, inside and out of the RV, it did a fantastic job of heating everything up to 72 degrees, which is where I had the thermostat set. So I was very happy with that, and I didn't have to use any propane. That was all just plugged in uh, to short power, so I had electricity doing that through the heat pump, and it did a really, really good job. The second day, however, the temperature dropped down to 20 degrees outside the RV, and for whatever reason, it was about 32 degrees inside the RV. And I really got nothing out of the heat pump. It was just blowing freezing cold air. My uh, infrared gun wasn't working either. Maybe it got too cold because I left it in the RV. But there wasn't much to measure because it was blowing the same cold air that the thermostat inside the RV was saying. It was just freezing cold air coming out of it. So I would say when you start dropping below freezing, your heat pump is really not gonna be an effective means of heating your RV at that point. And you're gonna wanna switch over to your RV furnace, which is gas operated. Now, the Dometic thermostat actually will control your furnace and your heat pump and your AC if you wire it in to do that. And it will automatically switch over to your furnace when it realizes that the heat pump is not gonna be efficient for you, which I think is a really, really handy feature. However, my furnace, is rigged in with its own thermostat, which is the way I wanted it. I just wanted more to control so I could, you know, kind of do them independently and separately. But that is a cool feature, but when you get down that low, you're gonna have to switch over to RV, uh, gas-powered furnaces or electrical heaters or something like that. So I uh, just wanted to kind of go over that test with you guys so we can actually see for a fact that they will work right down to the freezing point really, really well. And then after that, your, your efficiency just drops right off the map until they're blowing cold air. So I hope that helped you out. Please like, share, subscribe this video. It's really going to help us keep these videos coming to you. My name is Jim with FullMoonAdventure.com. And as always, thanks so much for watching and happy camping.